If you like to fish, then listen up. In the next 60 minutes, we have six expert guides who are going to share with you where to find bigger bass in fresh water. If salt water is your game, then we have what's hot in the bays and where to go offshore. So get ready, because it's time for the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Welcome to the Texas Insider Fishing Report. Presented by Yamaha. It's the moment we've all been waiting for, the start of the 2022 season on the Texas Insider Fishing Report. We're your hosts, Bree Gabrielle and Captain Rick Murphy, and we want to welcome you back to your weekend fishing reports from around the state. Rick, I don't know about you, but I am ready to get these fine folks back on the water. I certainly am, Bree, and you know what? We certainly have lots to be happy about. Yes, One, we do. We ain't having no baby and you're a skinny mini. Wow. I want to tell you, I'm so proud of how you bounce back. I love Thank it. Thank you. I'm working really hard. The yeah. baby is huge. <laughs> He's seven months now and he is just this, such a butterball. He is He's adorable. Butter. He is adorable. And my three-year-old, oh, it's we got good. A lot Mom of, life is good. Got a lot of new sponsors to share with we everybody do. along the next 26 weeks. Yep. And also, tin cup being one of them. Absolutely. And I can drink it this year. Yes, hey, there we go. There we go. All right, well, we wouldn't be able to do all of this without our workbench guru, Dave Farrell. Dave, you look like you're ready to get back to work over there. No, I hadn't had my baby yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm still working on mine. It's a, li uh, it's a lifetime baby right there. Yes, it is. Yes, yes it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I can't drink the tin cup either, but it hasn't got nothing to do with no babies. <laughs> it, well, it doesn't do you any good. No, really no, my here. elbows start getting back, but I have a, I, I start getting like this. We so. have some, we have different problems. Yeah. Different issues. <laughs> All right, well, we have a lot to get into for our first show back, so let's start off in the lower coast region with your very own Captain Chad Kinney. Welcome back to the show, Chad. <clears throat> Great, I'm looking forward to the season, and say with this weekend, you can't kick it off any better. The forecast I'm seeing is just beautiful weather for inshore and offshore, and I think I'm actually going to be switching my game plan up, going to the floater rigs this weekend, so I'll get you guys a good report from offshore uh, next week. But starting with our inshore here, we can start around Port Mansfield here. The water's barely starting to warm up here, and that's what's causing the redfish. They're starting to move up in the flats, out in the east flats there. And they're, the trout are doing pretty decent, but they're holding out in that deeper grass bed still, because that water temp's still pretty cold. And uh, this time of year right now, if you want some really good action, uh, all the jetties here in the lower coast are holding some really good sheephead. And up around the jetties there, that's where to, where to hit that. So starting out with the redfish, like I said, it's been, been some decent numbers all year round in Port Mansfield. I believe this is due last year we had the jetties dredge, which went down to a depth of 20 foot, and it was pretty much tilted in. So all that water has got a tidal movement going, which is allowing the bait to move in and out of our bay system, which, of course, the fish are following it in, and they're coming up in the flats there. So now is the perfect time you get there in the flats. I run a shallow sport boat around the X3. they got a huge line of boats there. Great. But hit that shallow sport off early. Get those east flats, start doing some S turns, looking for wakes and bait, bait movement there. Once you see enough numbers that you can find that it's good enough to shut down, I'd power pull down and spread your guys out and make a good wake fish right there. You're probably gonna be in like 12 to 18 inches of water so early, I'd start with like a mirror liver top dog junior. That's always a lot of fun early in the morning. And you can also try some paddle tail saltwater assassins, anything with chartreuse or anything I like that stuff, working that middle of the water column. And remember when I said middle of the water column, you're looking at 12 to 18 inches deep only, sometimes it's only knee deep. So you gotta do a quicker retrieve and keep that bait in the middle because um, they're gonna hit on instinct there. Moving over to sheephead, which doesn't last too long, but it's a lot of fun if you want some action and it's actually pretty good eating also with the lower coast here. You know, the jetties from Port A, Port Mansfield, South Padre Island. It's the uh, best bet on this stuff is to get some live shrimp and free line them, or you can add a little split shot to it if you like to. And I usually put about a 40 pound Mamoy uh, mono shock leader on this and just kind of pitch the baits kind of right off the rocks into your washouts, little edges like that. If you need to put a float on there, you can, but I think Freeliner works kind of the best like that. And you'll have plenty of action, like you said, and some good eating. Just kind of look at the weather, make, make sure you get some calmer weather, which this weekend will be. And we probably got a lot of people out there having some fun. Moving to offshore, state water snapper fishing. It is open and it continues to produce some really good fish. There's been some good red snapper out there. You know, deeper, you can be looking for some wahoo action. It's starting to pop up around some of the deeper structure there. So starting with the state water snapper fish, and like I said, the bite, it's been pretty good, but you got to really watch the sea conditions this time of year. Um, the reason being is we still get some northerns, so northerns trying to push down, get the south wind blowing north, wind blowing. Right now you got to just look at the sea, and also just as important, you got to look at the currents and the water clarity once you get out there. Uh, so right now with the currents that have been up higher do those northerns, I've been using like a double drop rig. Um, we've been talking about this for a while, but 130 to 150 pound mono 
the Momoi. I like that stuff. It works great. You can rig them with Eagle Claw 12 to 13 ounce circle hooks and then use some bank weights, 8 to 16 ounces, depending on the current. The lighter, the better, but if you got to go more weight than you're going to have to. And let it let it sit on the bottom there. Those got a big silt layer down there, and those fish are going to be down there kind of going with the smell. So moving to that, take some fresh bait if you can. Um, get mullet, squid, sardines, cigar minnows, anything that's fresh. They're going to be biting on and stay in that structure in the state waters between 40 and 90 foot. You're going to have some, some good action there. Got a picture of a couple we just took about a week ago. Uh, mother and son there got a good picture of a nice state snapper we caught there. Good job, Chad. So, Tell me about the wahoos. Yeah, wahoo fishing. It's not been on fire, but uh, there are showing up. I'll have some really good stuff for you next week on that. And uh, look for some debris, debris, of course, floating if you find anything, any weed lines, but definitely you can work those deeper buoys, uh, oil rigs, deeper structure. Pull some Islanders rigged with Ballyhoo. Of course, use wire on that. And I like using this one. I'm pulling, I'll pull three lines. I'll pull 30 to 50 wide, uh, 10 internationals, rigged up some 40 to 50 pounds, smoke blue, but boy, I like this. It has a little bit of stretch in the line when that fish hits at you know fast, fast speeds. A lot of times they miss it a bit. They hook the side cheek or anything else. That mine will give it a little bit of stretch, embed that hook, and you got a lot better land it. A lot better chance of landing them there. All right, bud. Thank you so much. We're going to go ahead and take a look at the shallow sport hot spots from the lower coast region. Chad says that inshore, out of Port Mansfield, the redfish are good up the shallows on the flat with sheep's head at the jetty on the good weather days and then offshore. State water snapper fishing has been good with some wahoos starting to show up out deeper and around the structure. All right, Rick, while well, Shallow Sport Boats is hosting their 21st annual Owners Fishing Tournament May 13th through the 14th at South Padre Island. This event has become known as the biggest and the best owners tournament on the Gulf Coast. Hundreds of teams compete for over a quarter million dollars worth of prizes, including a brand new Shallow Sport Boat, Suzuki Motor, and McLean Trailer Package. For more information, scan the QR code on the screen or go to shallowsporttournament.com. I'm talking to my teammate and just got yeah, off that one off the phone. We're going down there. The Texas. Going to be having some fun. Yep. South Texas. Here fun. we come. Here we come. All right, next up, we've got bass for y'all in the Lower Fresh region on Falcon, Choke Canyon, Lake Travis, Buckhannon, Fayette County, and Somerville. And who better to help us find them than Matt Reed? Let's hear it, Matt. Hey, guys. Let's get this thing rolling. Golly, I think we're starting season, what, six? Quite a few, bunch of shows. Yes, uh, sir. <laughs> all right, the bass at Falcon Lake are on fire. It's fishing really good. Uh, you want to concentrate on the shallow gravel points uh, with a Carolina rig, Texas rig, uh, shallow crankbait. Also, uh, uh, you know, a chatterbait is really catching those fish well. Uh, some are still spawning. Most are finished. Uh, but the big key is that the shad spawn is just beginning. Uh, tons of bait up there in that shallow water on that gravel, and what follows the bait? The big old falcon toads are up there. Lots of fun, so get on down here and, and, and get in on it. <clears throat> Moving on up to Choke Canyon, Mike Bates has sent me a report from there. The water temperature is finally reaching the upper 60s. The bass are in all three stages of the spawn, pre, post, and there's a few still doing it. Uh, the spawn's probably going to last through the first couple of weeks of April due to all the cold weather that we've had, you know, this this late winter. Uh, you can find them on the inside and the outside hydrilla lines. Chatterbaits, spinnerbaits, swimbaits, and Texas rig sinkos are, are getting bites. Uh, I mean, it's catching tons of numbers. Numbers have been in the 50 to 70 fish a day range. Uh, it's catching them both main lake and up the river. So Choke Canyon is, is really fishing good right now. Uh, Brian Cotter sent me a report from around the Austin area. Lake Travis is fishing pretty well. The mouths of the creeks are holding some good ones. And you can find some of the bigger ones moving up into the shallower water. Some are actually still on beds right now. Soft plastics and jigs have caught a bunch. Uh, also spinner baits and crankbaits if you're one of the people that likes to throw a moving bait more. Lake Buchanan has been fishing good. Uh, the keys there have been rock piles and trees in the five to ten foot range. Uh, you want to flip those those targets with your favorite soft plastics like crawl worms or stick baits. Uh, they should pretty slow this time of year and that'll get you the most bites. Greg Boyk with Angler's Angle Guide Service sent me a report from Fayette County. Uh, it's Fayette County's been fishing good. There's fishing, you know, from the shallows out to the main lake. It's a hot water plant lake, so 
some of those fish get done early and move offshore. Uh, <clears throat> the offshore fish are on a Carolina rig, a drop shot, or a, a big shaky head paired with a soft plastic and watermelon, green pumpkin magic, or red bug. Uh, for the shallower water flipping the trees, you want to use a dark colored creature bait uh, with a 3 8 ounce weight that's been producing some really good fish. Uh, swim jigs and rattle traps have, have been kicking them out on the isolated grass patches in the shallow water. Uh, Lake Somerville, the bass have, uh, are shallow. They're keyed in on the shad spawn also. Square bills, lip, lipless crankbaits, spinnerbaits, and chatterbaits are all doing well in that one to six foot range. Got a couple of pictures here of some little old baby, ba baby bass from Lake Falcon here. That have been Babies. caught in the last week or so. Uh, it's been crazy good for a while now. I've got a stockpile of pictures of, of, of good ones. It's just been a blast. Customer caught a 10 pounder today, matter of fact. So lots of fun. All right, tell us what else is happening in the lower fresh uh, region, Bub. Got some, got some crappie. I like Somerville. Crappie are biting extremely well around the shallow brush piles all around the lake, especially in Yewa and Birch Creek parks. Shiners under floats, and also a combination of chartreuse jigs are catching them, catch you a limit. That's some great eating. All right, well, if that's it, we appreciate you very much. Starting <coughs> us off on we, uh, year number six in 2022, we're going to go and take a look at the FiberTech hotspots from the Lower Fresh region. He says Falcon Lake bass are on fire. Concentrate on the shallow gravel points to catch the fish in all stages. Spawn post-spawn and the coming spawn sh uh, shad spawn ought to really trigger some good fishing the sea rig texas rig shallow crankbaits will load the boat guys i cannot believe it's 2022 already i feel like it was just 2020 what's going on man, man it seems like i just fast. lost like six months mm -hmm. <laughs> we're just getting started so make sure you stick around for our fish bites middle coast region and rigs and techniques at the workbench with dave farrell you getting riggy over there or what yeah i reckon so you know right. whoosh six years man that was whoosh. quick that yeah. is your life mate there it goes that's how your life goes whoosh yeah six years that's for sure what you got over there for us dave we're gonna be talking about texas rigs just like he was talking about showing you how to rig them up how to fish them deep how to fish them shallow let's go we'll be back The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Yamaha, reliability starts here. Fenwick, feel everything. Bahio sunglasses, blue light blocking, radically clear lenses. Garmin, plot your paradise. Fibertex, leaders in fiberglass fabrication and repair. Sportsman's Adventures, fishing for adventure. Berkeley, your fish, our science and Skeeter Performance Fishing Boats. Eat, sleep, fish. Well, Dave, we're here at the workbench and you know, every week we get to talk about rigs and techniques and we talk about new products later on in the show, but what are we gonna talk about tonight? Well, you know, springtime is bass time. You know, we got some big bass moving around, you know, depending on the water temperature. They can be in all stages of the spawn, coming, going, staying, doing it. Right. Uh, so, you know, a good slow bait is a good way to catch a big fish, and it's a good way to catch one on the bed, and it's a good one to get, way to catch them when they're off the bed. So a uh, big Texas rigged soft plastic bait is a really good bait. Um, let's, let's show them how to rig that Texas bit, rig first, you know. You're going to use a, a wide gap hook. Right. You know? This is the RSB, the Bass Assassin RSB, and the key to this as you've told me, yep. is that this part of the tail needs to be facing up. Up or flat, either way, when actually it's, flat. When it's uh, finely rigged, right? Put it up on there and put it, it back goes in. around. Go after you tie on, you wanna make sure you go over your- Your knot. Your knot, so that, guess what? So it becomes more weedless. Right. And then you just bury your worm hook into there. Well, and that's really good because it's, you know, it's weedless. Even though in the springtime, there's not as many weeds, still you can fish that in, a, in real heavy cover still. Uh, you know, you can throw it up in the grass. You can throw it, you know, you can, if you got the patience to let a big bait like that sink, you can, you know, fish it in deep water and even let it sink real slow. Now, you know, 
the thing of it is, is it's very adaptive but and very versatile, but there's really two different styles. There's the non-action, which is, you know, maybe a Cinco, which is, I, I, if I want to turn, if I don't have any Cincos, I just turn my RSB into a Cinco really quick by just clipping just the tail off. The tail <laughs> off. <laughs> I just right. bite it off. But this is what, what I would consider a non-action bait. And either that or a And big, would you rig this Texas rig? Still Same rig it style. Texas style, but I would use a really heavier weight, especially if I was in deep water, because I'd want that thing to go straight down. I'm not, because it doesn't have any little appendages or anything on it. This is like this a would, big bait like correct. this. Correct, this would be another example. With the with the uh, with the claw with the crawl here, this this is this is a crawl that doesn't have a whole lot of appendages on it. It's just got the two, so you know some of them have all kinds of little freaky little things all over them, and and those those you want them to go down slow. But the big the bigger ones, the ones that don't have a whole lot of appendages, we want those to bullet down fast Oop. because they're not really doing much on the sink, you know, because they they don't have a whole lot of little things that are flicking right. around. Right now. If you put the big weights on there, you'll get that, you'll get your big worm, your big Cinco down on the bottom into that strike zone really quickly. And not only that, that big weight is, is a, it makes you feel connected to the bait. You will feel all your bites a lot better. That heavier, that heavier weight. Uh, How big a ba weight is this, Dave? You have I think it's idea? a three quarters. Three quarters? I mean, you, you mean, you can go to a half ounce, half, you know, and if you're in 40 quarters, feet of water, yeah. Yeah. you know, you, you got, you'll learn a lot of patience trying to let a, 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 flirty, a fluttery worm sink in 40 feet of water. You're crazy. You'd, you'd, be, you'd take a long time. But with those, with those action baits, those ones with all the little, the little fluttery doodads, you don't want to put a big weight on there. Right. You know, because you want it to sink and flutter as it falls, you know, and fall slowly, you know, maybe in 10 feet or 15 feet of water and, then, and just let it sl sink slow. You still takes a long time for that to happen as well. But, you know, as it sinks down there, it gets hit a lot of times on the fall and, you know, the other ones don't. And it's really good to use, you know, a nice little uh, weight keeper to keep your weights close to the bait and keep you connected unless you don't want to keep your, your weight on there. Cause you, you gotta remember that weight is always gonna beat your bait to the bottom first. So if you're in deep water and you know, you want, to, you want it to get down there, but you want your bait to settle in after the weight, you just, you just peg your bait, your weight a little further away, you know, from, from your bait. And then that allows the bait to also elevate off of the bottom. Right. And you can also, you know, instead of just using a weight, you know, you can also, use little the little spike weights to put in them and you can use <coughs> hooks that are a different size now we have mag the magworm hook which is a lot thicker than the the uh, wg here the emg the emg has a, the emg has a very light wire compared to the to the magworm right and that big heavy wire can actually Axes act as a weight. good weight for you. Got so it. if you've got a bait that's not sinking fast enough and you don't want to stick something in it or make it even too heavy to make it sink faster, go to a heavier hook. You know, the heavier hook will make that thing sink faster. My problem has always been bass fishing where I didn't feel like I was in touch with the bottom. Yeah. I never treated it like it was a, a, a saltwater jig. Right. You know what I mean? Right. That's so important. Good yeah. job. No I worries. learned a lot. Thank you so much, Dave. All right, Bree, we got another region to learn from, so where are we going? Yes, we do. All right, we sure did miss Captain Bink Grimes and his thorough reports in the Garmin Middle Coast region. So let's see what he's got for your weekend fishing forecast. Go for it, Bink. All right, we're happy to be back. Uh, spring has been spring. It's got lots of ups and downs. One day the wind blows from the north, the next from the south. One day the tides are up, the next they're down. There's just really no consistency this time of year. So we just keep plugging much of this region. Uh, we've been in a drought for most of the fall and winter, which has allowed our rivers and bows to uh, remain green and salty. We're in a burn ban right now this time. It's just really dry down here. In Matagorda, the Colorado River has kind of been our saving grace on those days the wind blows your hat off. Uh, the Mirror Little Johns and Bass Assassins have been good uh, while jigging uh, quarter ounce uh, lead heads, working the drops in two to five foot of water. On those days when we have high tides, uh, reefs like Shell Island and Mad Island have held trout on live shrimp. Uh, Parks and Wildlife has uh, enacted emergency order on March, 20, on March 16th to reduce the trout limits uh, south of FM 457 and Sargent. That's most of the Middle Coast. That measure reduces the trout limit from three, uh, two, three uh, trout per day in the 17 to 23 inch class. 
Of course, many anglers have been taking pressure off our trout population since the freeze last year in February. Uh, this measure protects our spotting biomass for at least two years and gives those breeders a chance to replenish the bay. This order is going to go through uh, August 31st, 2033. So 20, I'm sorry, 2023. So that's a good 18 months, and we're hoping that it stays in place. A lot of attitudes are changing down here. Uh, we, we've kind of taken on the, the attitude of, of Florida, where a lot, a lot of catch and release, and, and it's been good for our bays. We're still asking anglers to, uh, you know, just keep all only what you intend to consume, and um, just take care of our bays. And Freeport guide Mike Se- Siegel, he's been uh, catching trout in the channels on live shrimp. He's working shell on those mirror lure corkies and soft uh, deans, and uh, he's been doing well also in Port O'Connor and Rockport. Uh, redfish has been the, the mainstay here in uh, in the spring. There's no doubt this time of year that wind put pressure on us. We go to those back lakes and we make a day out of it. Good catches have come uh, around Matagorda, tossing live shrimp on the mud flat. Waders in West Bay have had good catches on bass assassin, gold spoons, and mirror lure little John. Guide Tom Brown, he's been using cut mullet and working the flats on the incoming tides. The rocks off the ICW in Matagorda have been hosting good numbers of redfish in two to five foot of water. Black drum have shown up recently with better tides. Most of those mud flats that have those redfish, they also have uh, the black drum on them. Port O'Connor Jetty has been a boon for oversized redfish. It just got kicked off. Most of those fish are, are best on table shrimp and uh, cracked crab. It seems that most of them are coming in 30 to 100 foot of water. Uh, and uh, it, it's just a good spot to, to just work those drop-offs there as well. And Rockport got Red Price. He's been working the sloughs and guts on the fallen tide and finding redfish on live bait. He's working also the edge of the intercoastal on shrimp imitations and live shrimp. Photo there, that's beautiful redfish uh, found on, a, on the beach on a calm day last month. Uh, fish went 29 pounds, quickly released. That was my wife, and she was very, very happy to, to catch it. I'd be happy to catch it too, Bink. All right, what do you got for us offshore? Offshore, uh, you know, our red snapper has been uh, really uh, what's what's been going on uh, on those days when after a front, the, the wind will lay down. Guides are going out there in, in state waters and uh, catching Really, really nice uh, red snapper. Guide Michael Gebecca said uh, he's found a uh, snapper to 16 pounds in 30 to 50 foot of water. He said that cold weather that we've had for most of the spring and winter has pushed those fish tighter to the beach. And, and as a reminder, the state boundary uh, is nine nautical miles. Uh, I'm happy to be back reporting on the Garmin Middle Coast. It's time to get out, get some sun, bend a rod. Our temperatures are rising. Uh, water temperatures this week were close to 70 degrees. Just going to be a good spring. We ask you to please continue, continue to uh, practice good conservation, and please release more than you take. Hey, Bink, I got a question for you. So, how's the booking at the lodge? You guys real busy? We're very busy. It, it's uh, it's been uh, been pretty good. It's 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 hard to get people in right now on weekends. We got a lot of. A lot of weekdays uh, open that we can take care of people, but the weekends are, are going fast. We've, we've been very blessed with it. Now, why don't you tell people where they can go if they want to book a trip with how many guys you have working now out of the lodge? Man, we we, uh, we use 10 boats regularly out of there. We can uh, accommodate uh, 30 to 35 people. We can do meals, uh, everything. Uh, you know, people like to do their own meals. They can do that or we can take care of it. We have a chef there. And uh, we pick you up at the dock. You don't have to even leave. We pick you up right there on the water. You can fish off our dock at night uh, underneath the light. And uh, it's a pretty cool deal. If you want to go to the beach, it's about two miles away. So it's right. uh, pretty cool deal. Well, thank you so much. There's his information right there on the screen, guys. We're going to go and take a look at the mirror lure hotspots from the Middle Coast region. Bink says, in shore, the trout are good in the Colorado River on Miralur Little Johns while working the drop-offs. Redfish are good on the mud flats in Matagorda on shrimp and mullets. And then if you want to go offshore, offshore is good for red snapper and state waters and 30 feet of water. All right, well, coming up on the Texas Insider Fishing Report, we're taking you into the Starchon Middle Fresh region and then heading to the Fish Bites Upper Coast region. And remember, to keep up with everything fishing in Texas, make sure to head on over to our website, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter and Instagram, and to see new fishing adventures along with reports, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Captain Rick Murphy. We'll be right back. That's right. Do what she say. Do it. Do it, do it. 
The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Bass Assassin and Saltwater Assassin. The best lures, period. Island Lures, Tournament Tackle. Rodan, set it, forget it, catch more fish. Sirius XM Marine, weather, fish mapping, entertainment. Shallow Sport, Berkeley, your fish, our science. Murphy's Law Sport Fishing. Book your trip today at murphyslawsportfishing.com. And Penn, let the battle begin. All right, guys, today's power pole tip is what I call the spring back. You know, in bass fishing, a lot of times I'm looking for bass on beds, I'm looking for underwater grass beds, structure. And as I'm cruising around and I see something real close to the boat, the worst thing you can do is reverse the trolling motor. I'll use the power poles to spring me back. Check it out. Like right now, there's a nice little patch of grass with a bed on it. Power poles are going down. Power poles are down. I'm letting the boat load, letting it load up. Now I spring it back. Power poles up. Let the boat get the weight of the boat and bring the power poles up. Now look, I'm, I'm back. I haven't touched the trolling motor one time. Now if that's a fish on a bed right there, which I can see the bed, I didn't spook him, okay? Didn't have to hit the trolling motor. Now I can redeploy the power poles. I'm in the perfect position now to catch that fish. So guys, that is your power pole tip of the week. And that's Scott Martin doing the, the power pole back. tip for us, baby. That the man knows about spring the spring back. back. Woo, all right. I'm going to get him on that one. Okay, now let's <laughs> head on into the Startron Middle Fresh region on LBJ, OHIV, Toledo Bend, and Sam Rayburn and check on what's on our to catch list with Matt Losher. Go for it, Matt. All right, Bree, you got it. Uh, man, I'm excited. It's, uh, you can certainly use that spring back technique here right now, all over the Middle Fresh region. Uh, there is spawning fish going on all over the place. Uh, it's really a lot of fun right now. So I'm going to kick off the season with a bass only report because there's just, like I said, there's so much good stuff to talk about here in the Middle Fresh region right now. So many big bass being caught on so many different lakes. It's hard to fit it all into one report. So I'm going to catch you guys up on the bass and then next week I promise I'll bring you some other species. So here goes, uh, starting on uh, my home water, Toledo Bend. We are in the spawn mode. I mean, we're right in the middle of it. I believe this is our largest wave of spawning fish so far this year and probably for the spawn as a whole that are coming shallow right now. Uh, we're a little bit behind on the spawn compared to our typical year, but things are finally warming up. The water has risen a lot lately in the lake and the bass are just running to the shallows to lay their eggs. You'll want to stay around that one to five foot of water casting up to stumps and any shoreline grass and a little piece of cover that they can be bedding around. My most consistent bait for catching them lately has just been a real lightweight Texas rig, like a, a 3 16th or even an 8 ounce uh, Texas rig. And that new Bass Assassin Wupak Crawl is a perfect bait to put on it. I like to use the watermelon candy color as well as the pearl color a lot right now. The uh, Bass Assassin Vapor Shad is another great option. That's been producing a lot of fish lately. And I like that in pearl or watermelon colors as well. Now, if you want to just cover a lot of water and kind of figure out where some fish are ha hanging out at uh, and get some explosive strikes, a buzz bait or a frog are also good options. I'm throwing those in either white or black. Just kind of let the fish tell you which color they want that day. It changes up a lot. Uh, and it's a great way to catch a big one. Now, moving over to Sam Rayburn. It's a similar story and the same baits work well. However, there are just a few areas on Rayburn, uh, kind of in the mid lake section below 147 bridge down to about five fingers that have a little bit of hydrilla grass. And in those areas, you can catch fish using that uh, inside grass line as well, casting up to those sandy spots behind that hydrilla. That place has continued to put out a bunch of big fish as well, despite the tremendous pressure that it has received. Uh, most tournaments are still taking 25 pounds or more to win. So Raven is still really hot and you'll be able to catch some spawning giants there too. Been a bunch over 10 pounds weighed in so far in 2022. Uh, don't have an exact number, but I know it's been quite a few. So come get you some. Now moving on to the one that everybody has been hearing so much about. This is probably the hottest lake in Texas right now, I would say. O.H. Ivy. That place has produced so many giant bass over the past two years. It'll make your head spin. I got to say, Hats off to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department for doing an outstanding job on this fishery and many others. They do a good job all over the state. 
Um, but I did a little homework on the Share Lunker website, and I wanted to give you all a couple of statistics on Ivy real quick. So since uh, January 1st, 2022, there has already been 23 fish entered into the Share Lunker program over 10 pounds that were caught on Ivy. Now, no telling how many were caught that were released and just not entered into the program, but uh, what's really impressive is that in that list of 23 fish, 10 of those fish were over 13 pounds, including one that was over 17 pounds. And there's a handful of 13, or of uh, 14 and 15. I mean, it's just amazing. Uh, it, it's incredible what's coming out of that lake. And a large portion of those fish catches can be attributed to the Garmin Livescope. These guys are searching out these giant fish, sitting in deep water, and they're catching them using an umbrella rig. And that's still a good pattern. That's really a wintertime deal, so it's kind of starting to change now as we go into the spawn. But that lake is a little bit behind some of the others on the spawn. But they are starting to use jerk baits and Texas rigs, moving up in the drains that are beginning to warm up. And I'm sure those fish will be starting to spawn any day as well. But uh, now moving south to Lake LBJ, uh, I'm going to finish up on this one. My old buddy, Jared Poole, the Hill Country Hammer, he is steadily putting his clients on giant bass, as always. And he says that the fish on LBJ are in full-blown spawn mode uh, as well, so catching them shallow, and he's doing a lot of sight fishing. So I look for Jared to be sending a lot of pictures of giant bass in the coming weeks, like the one I'm going to leave you guys with today. Uh, here's a photo to finish out of Jared's client, Mr. Toby Reed with an 11.2 pounder he just caught recently. So congrats, Mr. Reed. That's a beautiful bass there. Keep them coming, Jared. Sounds like the Middle Fresh region is totally on fire, Bree. But you know what? We got to go ahead and take a look at the Rodan hotspots for the Middle Fresh region. He says that the bass are spawning on Toledo Bend, Sam Rayburn, and LBJ. The Texas rig plastics and buzz baits are great on those lakes. OH Ivy is still in the pre-spawn phase. Uh, but it won't be very far behind. Use umbrella rigs in the deep water and square bills up shallow and have been having some really good success. What do you think? Those are some impressive LBs, that's so, for sure. <laughs> PBs, personal besses. PBs, hopefully. Personal besses. Yep, that'd be mine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Captain Carl Weston has been very busy catching in the Fish Bites Upper Coast region, so let's see what he has for us. Hey, Carl. Hey, guys. Welcome back. Again, another year. We're all here. <laughs> yeah, man. So, hey, um, let's we, we go right into the Galveston Jetties. They've been really hot this year with a little warmer temps the last few days, the last weeks. Uh, the big bull reds are there. They've been putting them on the dock on a regular basis. Some of these fish are pushing 40 inches, and they're full of fight. So, if the big reds are where you want to be, get out there right now. That water temp is 62 degrees right now, so the fish are really strong. They're going to give you a long fight. It's a lot of fun. Um, as, as far as what's hot in the bait department, it's definitely live bait right now, guys. These uh, fish are really hammering the live bait. Uh, they like it live, and they're going to give you that good fight like we talked about. Grip on a popping cork is always good. The medium-sized shad, about three to four inches. Hook them up near the eyes with like a six-dot eagle claw live bait hook. That's where it's been at for rigging. I tie that myself onto about a 50 pound Diamond Lemoy leader. Or carbon or regular, you should be in the game. Also, you know, don't forget to tag these big bull reds if you keep, if you plan on keeping them. And in that same area, we're having a very good run of big black drums this spring. The guys are fishing the bottom with cut blue crab and shad. And Captain JT over at In The Zone Chargers has been on these fish all week. I've been watching his pictures. So if you want to go get one, call call JT over at In, in The Zone Chargers. Um, he told me they're using a sinker rig with about an eight ounce sinker, egg sinker. And once again, about a six dot crow car hook. This setup will allow you to feel the bite a whole lot better. And I say that because sometimes a black drum will pick up the bait and move off very slowly, making it more difficult to get them hooked up. So. You know, this will help you feel that bite. Uh, we got a picture today with JT and some clients with a nice red and a black drum on the same afternoon. Nice. Nice. All right, what do you got offshore there, bub? Or you got one more inshore? Or no, you play had two. What's offshore? Sorry. Yeah, we're headed offshore. <laughs> um, offshore has been a little hit and miss this spring. You know, if you're in this area, this crazy weather, we've had a lot of wind. But when a window of opportunity has hit, the face 
fishing has been amazing, guys. I've been out a few times lately, and uh, there's good bait. There's good fish. Out about 60 miles, there's been a nice current break. The water is beautiful cobalt blue. There's there's a little scattered weed and some debris in there, but there's bait in there. There's been Dorado. There's been Wahoo. Um, and if you watch these little weed lines, you'll see the birds dipping on some of the smaller bait, and that's where you want to be. Watch your lines when you get to that. Watch your speed. Uh, we've been trolling uh, R&R, the mahi magnets in green and yellow at about six to seven knots. That's kind of been the flavor of the week. And we also run a naked valley in the center. Out, I run them way back, about 75 feet behind my outside lures. And sometimes it'll trick a big bull of a lifetime. It's happened, uh, you know, a few times. So we got a picture of Mr. Greg today with a nice bull Dorado in his old lucky star bright hat. All right. All right, what else? You got so, some wahoos, Bob? Wahoo again. Yeah, we got to start the season off right. And it's from full swing here in the upper coast. Already this year, we have seen some beautiful fish weighed in, Rick. We've seen Wahoo in a 60 to 80 pound range. And that size has not been uncommon in some of these winter tournaments that are going on. And they're, they're uh, strong too. They're running strong. A lot of boats participating. As far as tracking these little speed demons, it seems like the flower gardens may be one of the favorite spots for anglers to catch these guys. And it's been that way since I can remember. The flower gardens never seem to disappoint. But most offshore structure will hold, that holds good bait in the 250 to 400 uh, range will provide really nice fish as well. So don't you don't always have to run that far. Now, bait can vary from boat to boat depending on the preference of the captain. You know, Ray over at r and I'll mention again, has some go-to rigs that we use. The, the Wahoo Magnet Senior is a pre-rig trolling rig. For me, that's money. It's one of my favorite because you can just tie this rig on. It's rigged with steel cables, strong hooks, great swivels. Easy to use, you tie it on, you put it in the spread, and in no time the reel will be screaming. So just uh, keep it, <laughs> your eye on your drag as well. And uh, that kind of wraps it up offshore. Okay. So Carl, you got a good weekend this weekend as far as weather goes. Where are you and Natasha going fishing? Well, I think we're gonna head a little south. Um, there's been some nice fish down south towards, uh, you know, out in front of Freeport a little more. Uh, both bottom fishing. Pelagic, so we're going to be in that area somewhere. All right, man. Well, we'll look for some good pictures. Uh, appreciate you starting our first week off, and we're going to go ahead and take a look at the R and R tackle hotspots from the Upper Coast region. Carl says, "Inshore, fish inside the Galveston jetty for those big bull reds. Stay rigged with live shrimp or a popping cork or a live shadow on a 60 trocar live bait hook, and then offshore." Control R and R tackle Wahoo magnets in black and purple colors over large offshore structures in 250 to 400 foot range. What do you think, Bree? Oh, to have Captain Carl Weston's life. Yes. Sounds grand. And then you throw. Never mind. We're just gonna let it go. I love just Natasha too. She's Me great. Too. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we're introducing a brand <laughs> new captain in the Upper Fresh region next, and we're seeing what new products Dave has for us at the workbench. Any goodies over there, Dave? We got plenty of goodies. We got a lot of new Ooh. products, <clears throat> but we also have the one lure that's probably caught more blue marlin than any other lure in the world: blue and white islander. We're going to be talking about some of the new islanders today as well. I'll take it. We'll be back. The Texas Insider Fishing Report is brought to you by Tin Cup Mountain Whiskey. Turn on the bite anytime. Tie on a mirror lure. Abu Garcia, fish to win. Ameritrail, load, launch, relax. Fenwick, feel everything. Diamond Fishing Products, our reputation is on the line. R&R Tackle, from our tackle box to yours and StarTron. Start, run, and store with StarTron. Well, we're here at the uh, workbench, and Dave, it's now time for some new products. So well, let's just start with Island Lure, some of my favorite lures of all time. I just wanted to you know, bring this one out. This isn't one of the new ones. This is uh, the old traditional style with the, with the nylon hair, and now, we're coming out with some that have octopus skirts on it. You know, the vinyl skirts, which is a lot of, you know, a lot of guys pull on their, on most lures. Uh, 
you know, the fellow who made these actually made these lures because he was tired of pulling ballyhoos. And then now we all we do is get ballyhoos and put them up the skirt <laughs> and pull them with ballyhoos in them. Put them but up that blue and white one over there, that one's probably caught more blue marlins on the East Coast than any other lure. And A lot of fellas say because, that if they could well, only have one lure, well, it'd be a blue and white the, islander. The reason is, is everybody's pulling one. If everybody's right. got one in the spread, it's going to get eaten a lot. Right. But it's, it's also a great lure. So we're going to talk a little bit about all these with the octopus skirts on it. Um, this is a sea star, which is one of my favorite ones. You know, it's a really good bait on the on the short or on the long rigger. It's one of those baits that'll do either one. Um, they got the, that's the, the sail lure and uh, the sea star and the black fin here. And then the regular old island lure, which is that heavy one down there. Right. That, that island down there has got right. a nice big heavy weight in it. But all these lures are made to, to either pull by themselves with a hook in them or to fit a ballyhoo, put a ballyhoo up inside of them. Nice. And they're just some of the great there are. I mean, the best lures there are. I, you know, we got to do rigs. Go to mirrorlure.com. Oh, sure. So, I mean, and how you like to rig them in the yeah. different sizes and why. Yeah. I'm going to challenge you with that. Okay. Mirrorlure.com. Okay. We're going to go to that one. Okay. We're going to get it done with this. What did you on. have next? That's okay. No worries. I'm sorry. Knock and tail lures. You know, these are really cool soft plastic base. We have a little uh, rattle built into the tail. Right. And they have a really... Uh, light action so if just moving it just a little bit just reeling it you don't even have to bounce it or anything if that bait moves at all that little rattle is kicking off so you know it's, it. if it's moving it's making noise you know pretty durable works in both salt or fresh water it's got a recessed area under the chin so if you put a weighted hook on it it'll sit right up in there it's got a nice groove on the back right as well so it, on the belly and the back, actually, so that yeah. you can, you know, tuck your hooks in there, Texas rig style. And, uh, you know, I, I think I can't wait to use them. I just got them. This guy makes them from Katy, Texas. You know, he's, cool. he's got, uh, uh, so go to my coastal, mycoastoutdoors.com to get the knock and tail lures. All right. Next, we got the Fenwick HMG, which stands for high modulus graphite. Uh, it's the inshore spinning model uh, 15 pound mono with this one you'd go to 20 to 50 pound braid with it it's got a really nice uh, locking seat on here right. it's got a you know it's a dual locking seat dual, dual. Uh, yeah mm -hmm. it's, it's called a sea guide soft touch real sheet real seat whoa with a positive lock design this is seven and a half footer seven and a half they come in seven seven and a half and eight feet they all have the fuji alkanot guides with a deep pressed frame it's stainless steel so you know it's got a corrosion coating on it as well more anti-corrosion coating uh, it's got the premium really nice AAA uh cork handles on them uh just they feel really nice yeah, <laughs> they, they are, real light it's very light rod it comes with a limited lifetime warranty as well uh Extra heavy, medium light, medium heavy, and medium heavy. So where do we go to find those rods? Fenwickfishing.com. All right, let's keep rolling. Last but not least here, we got the Man of War Fishing Company Filet Knives. Uh, we got, they, they make uh, four different ones. The six inch boning, the seven inch flex, uh, which is that one right there. The eight inch narrow, eight inch narrow, and the nine inch flex. Uh, razor sharp, they're made out of stainless steel, uh, non -st uh, high carbon stainless steel, non-stick finish. It's also, what's really cool about it, in the handle there, if you pull that little knob, don't twist it, just pull it straight out. It's got a little ceramic sharpener, so while you're, you know, cleaning that big pile of sheep head or uh, <laughs> trigger fish and, and your knife is screaming, you can give it a little fresh on the ceramic. I like there. it, keep it sharp. Comes with a nice little sh sheath. Sorry. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and a haircut from the and a haircut, exactly. <laughs> but uh, anyway, check them out at manofwarfishing.com. They also have a whole lot of other uh, little tools, hand tools and, and stuff. So. Hey, guys from Man of War, call Man, me. Man of War I Fishing. An, I have an idea for you. <laughs> call me. Right, call Rick? me. Call me. Call me, guys. Oh, my call gosh. Me. That, was, that was cute. Those are some good knives right there. All right, let's give a warm welcome to our new captain of the season, Mike McFarland in the Upper Fresh Region. I know you're no stranger to the show, Mike, so let's hear what you have for our first weekend out there on Lake Fork and Levon. Well, hello, Rick and Bree. It's awesome to be here. Um, man, we finally have the awesome weather. Water temperatures ranging from 56 to 62. Water clarity zero to one foot. And I'm telling you, the big bass, they are biting. They are being caught on main lake points, shallow reefs, using big baits, much bigger than you would expect. 
glide baits, like seven inch uh, glide baits and seven inch line through swim baits are really your best um, bets. Basically, the my favorite colors right now are anything shad. Uh, the IU is probably your the hottest baits, but the light hitch colors and anything shad um, is really really good. Many of the bass have actually also moved into the shallow waters. We're a little behind this year. So the backwater spawning areas, they're filling up right now. And man, I'm telling you, you can go in and have a blast. Texas rig, wacky worms, um, anything with soft plastics, colors like watermelon candy, green pumpkin, watermelon red. Um, it, it's just, it's, it's a no-brainer getting that shallow backwater and slow down and, and you're going to catch some fish. Another type of bait that I really like is the Zoom brush hog and or even the Strike King Cutter Worm. They're really, really good. I also expect it to get even better. Um, this is the beginning of our spawn. A little behind, but it's just gonna get better. Uh, there's a nice pick here of a couple of giant fish caught um, this week with uh, one of our guide trips. Nice, nice. All right, bud, what else you got for me this week? Some crappie? So I, got, I got crappie, also on crappie. Terry Moon, one of our great crappie gals, guides out there, and she said that the crappie too have moved into spawn. They're in the backs of the creeks, two feet of water. You know, many minnows and anything chartreuse is working really well. Um, usually those males are real defensive. Um, you're gonna catch the male before you catch the female, but there are still a bunch of fish at 22 feet of water on brush piles and bridge pylons. I'm um, in a bobber and a live minnow is always good there too. Um, big picture of a of catch, a big catch that they had, and you can see those are some big late four crappie. All right, so Mike, are you done? <laughs> Well, I got one more little thing for you. I got Go crappie ahead. at Le Bon. All right, tell me about it. Bon? No, if you I fish haven't. Carrie the... Thorne says that you know, a little bit of everything's biting there. The crappie are good, the bass are good, even the, the white bass are good, but crappie also moving into the northern ends of the lake. Rocks and timber, minnows, jukes working well. The main lake's temperature is basically fluctuating between 55 and 58, which is similar to fork, um, but the northern waters there seem to be warmer, 58, 59 and your best depth range, one to seven feet. All right, so I got a couple questions for you, new to the show, so tell us, what's your favorite fish to fish for there, Mike? Man, my favorite fish has gotta be a largemouth bass. Right. Um, there's just nothing that's gonna make your heart pound and pull your line near as hard. So, um, so what's Lake the big, biggest bass you personally have caught? 15 pounds. Wow! Wow, that's a good Woo. one, and what's the biggest one you've guided to? 12.84. All right, oh, nice. I, I like it. So when you're not fishing, what else do you like to do? You like to deer hunt, duck hunt? What else do you like to do? I do love to hunt. I love the deer. I'm not very good at it, so I tend to go with some good friends who can show me how. And uh, I also do love inland birds. So anything with quail, pheasants, and of course the duck hunting is hard to beat. Right. Um, yeah. I love to go with experts, if anything. <laughs> yeah. I always so, try to attach myself to an expert whenever possible. A few, Absolutely. A few more questions. How do you like to cook those quail? The quail, you know what? I like me in a couple different ways. I like to bake and wrap them, but that gets so old, you know, believe it or not, sometimes I'll actually marinate them in, in, uh, in two or three different things, just soy sauce and, and cook them and put them over rice or the traditional like you would with with, uh, I don't know why it is, but Italian dressing, Italian dressing and things just, it makes just about everything taste good. <laughs> don't so, on the grill. So are you married? Do you have any kids? I have a 30 year old grown up boy and he is a trucker for Prime. He's a good kid, stays out of trouble. And uh, at this time I am not married. Oh, all right. Well, that's good. So let me ask you something. If a guy wants to book a trip, obviously your stuff is on the, um, on the screen there, but what should they expect and you know how much is it for do you do half days you do full days what are you you're going to be probably be on fork i sure do i offer a half day at 350 for two person one or two person i offer a full day at 500 for one or two person provide all gear rods reels line baits everything necessary and i guarantee one thing fun 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 with me and bring you home safe i also run in a 2022 brand new skeeter fxr there is no better boat Got it powered with a 250 Yamaha show engine. I'm telling you, it is a ball to be with McFarland Fishing. All right, well, make sure you take some pictures along this bumpy road of this season we're gonna have, which is always makes it really fun. We appreciate you stepping in, filling in for Johnny. It was time for Johnny to enjoy life. He wanted to go do some goose hunting and duck hunting, and so he hit the road, and we want to wish him the best of yeah. luck. We'll miss Johnny, but we're sure glad 
glad to have you. Right. I'm grateful. I'm very grateful. And Johnny's like a big brother to me, so I love him too. And he's still around to talk with. All so. right, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and get a couple hot spots from the Upper Fresh region. Let's see what Mike says we should go do. Here it is, Bree. Giant bass are being caught daily in Fork. The spawn will soon start. And it is for sure only to get better in the upcoming days. Well, that was a really <laughs> super fun get to know you with Mike. Yeah. You have to do it, right? Well, you got to do that. <laughs> what are you doing? That's why we save some time. Oh, I know. I there you know. go. That's why we save some time at the end of the show. We got to get to but know we, the family. But we got to have a toast to the 2022 yes, season do. of the Texas Insider Fisher Report. Thank you all for joining us. We'll see you next week. Have a great day on the water. Let's cheers. 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 Great That's always season. a waste of time, isn't it?